Himish, we're talking about someone who very well might be the next Republican nominee for president. I'm obviously talking about former President Trump. I know you've been looking into some of the reporting that, in the, that is in this book. Given that at this moment he is still the de facto head of the Republican Party, what is the most shocking thing in here that the American people need to know? The most shocking thing when you take all of this reporting into account, and I've been talking to some former Trump officials as well as some allies of President Trump, the most shocking thing is that people within the Trump administration thought President Trump was crazy. They thought that he was someone who could not be trusted to head the military and to be the commander-in-chief of our country, and that you had military officials taking extraordinary actions and having extraordinary conversations in order to try to protect the, the, the American people from what they thought was a president who was unstable and who at times they felt was mentally ill. Um, this was a president who even his, his, even the people that were closest to him um, really did not trust him with some of the basic things um, that presidents are supposed to do, which is really protect the American people. I've also been having conversations with people who have uh, at sometimes confirmed for me the direct word-for-word -word conversations that General Milley was having with a number of people. Among them, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, who, of course, at the time was a chief opponent of former President Trump on January January 8th, this was two days after the, the Capitol attack. And when President, when, when House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said, he is crazy, he is crazy, we cannot trust him, General Milley, who is not a political person, said, I agree with you on everything. That's word for word. That tells you that even people who were not not conventionally political, they were looking at President Trump and saying he is someone that is very, very much someone who could put us all in peril. And as a result, you see you see this reporting coming out with people saying they had to try to do what they could, even breaching the chain of command in order to, to try to protect the country. Himish, Peter mentioned it a moment ago. Milley is set to testify before the Senate Armed Services Committee less than two weeks from now. And there's a ton uh, of questions. I mean, he's got to cover terror threats, Afghanistan, a whole lot. Do you think the stuff inside this book also needs to be addressed, or is it a waste of time? The, the person who is potentially putting us in peril or at risk, Donald Trump, he's now just a private citizen, an unemployed guy. It's a great question. I think there's two things. One, yes, pre former President Trump is a private citizen, but he's also someone, as you noted smartly at the beginning of this, someone who is at the head of the ticket. So this is not something that's going away. So there is, I think, um, real energy on the side of the Democrats and possibly also the Republicans, because they want now, there are a lot of them, or at least some of them are calling for Milley to be dismissed. There is, I think, this real bipartisan interest in figuring out how bad did it really get during those Trump years, and especially how bad could it get if President Trump was possibly possibly reelected. Um, I think that you're going to see Democrats really wanting to try to paint Milley and say he was protecting the country. So they might be asking him questions about that, asking him questions about what are the dangers going forward if someone who is unstable um, has to be the president again. And then I think you have Republicans, including Senator Mark Rubio of Florida, who want to possibly pressure um, Milley to resign or, of course, as he's already called for, ha is, is wanting is wanting President Biden to what dismiss him. What is that going to get Marco Rubio? And about what they, why Millie did what he did. Millie resigns. What, how is that a win for Rubio? What does he get out of that? I, it's a really interesting question. Um, I think what he gets out of it is this, is, is this more close alliance to the head of the Republican Party, which is former President Trump. Um, there are these people, of course, that are going to be vying, Marco Rubio, others, who are going to be vying to see if former President Trump doesn't run, can they still run on the Trump legacy? Can they still run on the closeness with Trump? Because Republican voters are very, very much aligned with Trump. So if you're someone who is now seen as having Trump's back, um, you could then be be seen as, as someone who could take Trump's supporters if he doesn't run for president. So that's, of course, the political angle. Of course, if you ask Republicans, they're saying that the what Marco Rubio gets out of this is taking down a, a, a joint chief of staff who stepped out of line, who Republicans think who Republicans think did the wrong thing here. Of course, that's, that's a Republican view of this, because you go back to Democrats, you say, President Trump was unstable. He was lying about the very democracy that holds this country together, and that he needed to be stopped, and he needed to have guardrails around him. And General Milley was one of those guardrails.